Hey, what's up guys? It's Evan. Today we're going to be looking at the GL view. Now, what the GL view does is it acts as an OpenGL ES renderer target. What that means is you can write WebGL code and it will bind it to OpenGL ES code. If you're not familiar with OpenGL or WebGL, basically there was OpenGL uh, centuries ago and then a little bit after that, native version of that was written called OpenGL ES, and then a little bit after that, WebGL was written, and that was based off of OpenGL ES. And the thing about WebGL ES is that it, it has a lot of really great supporting frameworks, things like 3JS, or Pixie, or Phaser, or Regal, or Processing JS, or uh, did I say Phaser? Yeah, or the Canvas, just lots of different things that you can do with it, and there's lots of potential. You probably already have some GL code written that maybe you want to run natively as in iPhone or Android application. So that's what the GL view does. This view is accessible through the Expo GL package. You don't need to download all of Expo to use it. Uh, so it's just really exciting and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to use it. Now I have a video talking a little bit more holistically about all the features and capabilities of this. I'll link that somewhere and uh, it's me in Paris and my hair looks kind of cool or receding either way more receding than anything else. Uh, but I also just wanted to show you guys really quickly, this is an example of an app that I was able to build with Expo GL. So this is called Pillar Valley. I built this first as a mobile app using Expo GL and 3JS. And then I was able to make a website out of it using the exact same code. Like this is available on the app store as a native app. And then you can play this game in the browser and it's just fully accessible. And what's great about this, so let's look at some example code. Links to all this will be in the description below. All right, I was filming a bunch of tutorials at the same time. I actually filmed them in reverse order. There will be a video on how to use this with 3JS and then a video on how to use this to make ARKit applications. So we're just going to keep building off of this. Uh, but we got to start small. We got to start easy and manageable. So we're going to import GL view and asset from Expo. You could also import this from Expo-GL or Expo-Asset. Uh, if you were using these in a regular React Native init project. And then to draw this image over here on the right, which is our entire demo by the way, what we're going to do is we're going to create a GL view. But uh, it works like any uh, React Native view, so you can add whatever kind of styles you want to it. And then it has this on context create prop. Now on context create is a method that we call when the OpenGL ES context has been created and it will provide a WebGL rendering context that you can interface with to create these GL experiences. Uh, that may all sound like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but we'll get a little bit deeper into it in just one moment after we discuss the other prop which GLView provides, which is the MSAA samples. That is something that will enable the iOS built-in multi-sampling system. With this prop, you can specify a number value. Default is four. If you set it to zero, it will completely turn off multi-sampling. And then on Android, it does nothing because this just uses the iOS multi-sampling system. But it's kind of just a, a quick fact because it's not too useful and I barely ever use it. But that covers all the props in the GL view. So now we can move on to the exciting stuff with on GL context create. It's going to pass in this GL prop, which like I said earlier, is the WebGL rendering context. And with this, we can write any kind of WebGL that we want. For instance, to do this image over here on the side, what we do is we create some GL shaders and I'm not going to dive too much into exactly how to code WebGL. There's a lot of much better tutorials from much smarter people that I would recommend you check out. So we're going to create a vertex shader and a fragment shader. We do these by doing gl.create shader. If you're familiar with GL, this should all look very, you know, familiar to you. Uh, and then gl.shader source and then we're going to create our shader right here in line with this string. Uh, not going to get too much into what this is doing. And then we're going to compile that vertex shader. Then we have a fragment shader, same deal, create it, string, compile the fragment shader. We use these to actually draw the image to the screen. Then we can create a program. Again, this all is just verbatim GL code. Uh, we create the program and then we're going to attach our vertex and fragment shader. We'll link the program that we just created and then we're going to actually implement that program. And now we're going to create a, a buffer and then we're going to bind an array buffer to it. Now what this is doing is it's defining the vertexes on the screen that we want for our buffer, which is just triangles that it will be drawn. So you see we've got 
two triangles defined by six vertex points. And then we will create our array buffer with those vertex datas, and then we'll process a static draw with it. I'm gonna skip over a little bit about what's going on here. I really wanna to touch on this expo specific part, and that is that to load the asset in or to use the function, where is it, text image 2D. To use this function, there's a little bit of expo specific stuff. So we're going to create an asset and then we're going to require an image. So we have this local image at assets, snack icon.png. We'll create an asset from it. Then we're going to do download async so that we can load in a local URI and the width and height of those images and or that image. And that is what is required to draw the image with uh, expo GL or XGL. Then we're gonna create a, a GL texture the way we would in WebGL, OpenGL, OpenGL, yes. Pretty much the same anywhere. But when we get to the part where we use image 2 d then at the end we're going to pass in the entire asset. Now what we're really passing in is the local URI width and height, which is the object that this is expecting. This is gonna be a little bit different from WebGL where it's probably expecting a uh, an HTML image element. That That's just like one small caveat to this, uh, next to a giant list of caveats that we'll get into here in a second. The next expo specific thing that you should look out for is this gl.endframeexp. So what this does is when we call all these gl.clear, gl you know, clear again, gl.drawArrays, all of these, what we're doing is we're creating a giant stack of commands. And when we call end frame exp, it flushes all those commands and then draws them natively. So we need to call this every time we're done with the frame so that it knows what to draw on that frame. And then over here, we're creating a simple loop using request animation frame. So every time an animation frame is available, we're gonna call on tick. And that means that at the end of each frame, we're gonna call gl.endframedexp. Now, that is it for the basic setup of how to draw a texture, uh, addressing some of the little expo specific nuances. And then, like I said, there was a big list of things that we need to discuss, and those are the things that are not available. So if you were to come over here to the Expo Docs page, again, it has basically everything I covered verbatim because I just read it off screen. And then it has stuff like take snapshot, create contexts, and these are all used for headless uh, GL methods, which I won't get into today. Uh, but basically you can do GL stuff without having to create the view, which is really nice if you want to do things like filter images off screen. It's kind of exactly where we made it. Well, by we, I mean Tomas. Tomas made it. The important part that I wanted to get into, though, is this part at the bottom which talks about the WebGL API, and it talks about what's not currently implemented, and it's this list of things. Now, this isn't a big deal breaker, uh, but you may run into some issues with a, a few of these things, and they will mess with some advanced effects that you might be trying to build. If you are, open an issue on Expo GL, or I guess the Expo Expo repo, and we can talk about like trying to get these built, or submit a PR if you're feeling, you know, saucy that day. And then, yeah, it just goes about addressing that whole thing that I said about text image 2D. That also applies to text sub image is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, text sub image 2D. I think that about covers it for all the nuances. And then in future videos, we will talk about the high level APIs, really exciting stuff like how to use 3JS, Pixie, Phaser, or processing. So stay tuned, subscribe so that you don't miss all that riveting content which is to come. It is actually pretty exciting. It sounded a little sarcastic. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment if you have any questions or recommendations for other videos that you want to see made next. And uh, like I said, links to all this code and the docs will be in the description below. And I will see you in the next video.